The trouble with modern day cars is they're all pretty much the same, but there is good reason for that. We see lots of manufacturers coming together to design underpinnings of cars just to save costs. We also see lots of rules and regulations around safety features, and of course that's limiting and what you can then do to the rest of the car. But every so often something comes along that's a little bit different, and today is no exception. Welcome to the Honda E. I waited what feels like a very long time to see this car in the flesh. It, it actually wasn't that long ago that we first saw it at some of the motor shows and it was just a concept car. I don't think any of us really thought for one minute that this was going to be built for real. But Honda had other ideas and that was spurred on by social media and people just telling them that it looks absolutely stunning. Please, please, please build this car. But of course, concept cars generally, they don't turn out on the road like they do at the, the, the shows. But Honda, I think, did things a little bit differently. And I've since learned that actually they built their prototype, a working prototype first, before they built the concept, which then meant that they knew that that concept could pretty much be transferred to the road. There was a few little tweaks, of course, and some of those, well, they've, they've taken away a little bit. But on the whole, how many concept cars have you seen that end up going from that glitzy stage onto the road looking almost identical? Because I think there's very few and far between. And they really have kept the heart and soul of this car. Now, we saw it, normally it was in the uh, white with the black trim, but actually, do you know what? This black is absolutely stunning. And before, I know probably 60% of you now are shouting at me saying, are you blind, man? Are you completely mental? That thing looks awful. I get it. This thing is probably a bit like Marmite for some people, but I love it. And the reason why I love it is because it reminds me, and I think this whole car is based on a kind of almost a retro feel. It takes me back to when I was in my early teens and me and my mates used to draw cars, the cars that we loved to see or the cars that we wanted. And they were always short, stubby, three-door cars with these rounded corners. They were always slammed to the floor and they always have massive alloys on them. Uh, and they were, do you remember, they were always sort of pitched in and coming out the side, flaring out. Well. I reckon, what are we, 85%, 90% there with this car already. This is the teenage me's version of what I wanted when I was growing up. Now, as an adult, perhaps it's not practical uh, for me for a family of four. And you'll see it is actually, it's quite small inside. But visually, inside and out, this thing is absolutely stunning in my opinion. So let's start outside and I'll explain to you where this one sits within the, the model range. This is kind of in the middle. This is the Advanced 16. You can start off with the basic package, which is about 26 and a half thousand pounds here in the UK. And that gives you a 100 kilowatt motor. If you then go on up through the range, you've got the Advanced 16 and the Advanced 17. They are pushing up and around 30,000 pounds, but you get a 113 kilowatt motor. The motor in all of them sits in the rear and they are rear wheel drive. And as you can see, this short stubby thing with the wheels on the corner, uh, this thing is a hoot to drive, I can tell you, and we'll see more about that later. But let's look around the car, and starting with the front, so distinctive. And this is where we, we saw it first of all, that head-on shot, those lights, it almost looks puppy-eyed at you, doughy-eyed. It looks like it's, it's just this poor little car that just needs to be loved. And I think that's why we all fell in love with it, because, well, it's just got that personality straight away as soon as you walk up to it. Of course, these lights, uh, you've got the, these circular daytime running lights. And while we're at the front, the charge port itself, well, that supports 6.6 .6 kilowatt charging at home. Of course, you can plug into a domestic plug as well, and up to 50 kilowatt charging when you're out and about looking at rapid charges. And from the front to the side, well, that sleekness, it just remains. I think it looks better because it's black, because the black just, it blends into the wheels and we've just got this lovely flat side to the car with everything hidden away, a nice door handle hidden away. When you walk up with the keys, it does pop open. Otherwise I can just push it open and open the door. The wing mirrors, again, we'll talk about these more when we get inside the car, but they're not wing mirrors, they're cameras. Makes it a lovely sleek finish and it just all blends in nicely with this black. You'd think it's a three door car, but it's not. It's a nicely hidden away handle. It is a five door car. And the only way that the, the side panel is really broken up is, well, just this little fold here in the metal that runs down the side. It just gives it a little bit of detail and it just breaks up that slab-like appearance uh, and just gives that light reflection something a little bit different to work with. So while the car, it just brings it in, it keeps it nice and squat and short. Uh, the wheels, I think, look lovely. These are 16-inch black alloy wheels. Uh, 
yes, of course, you could go bigger. And I think the 17 would fill that arch nicely. But um, I think that's a really, really good option. They look good. They're not too big. They're going to help with your, your efficiency and your economy. Round to the back. Well, it just continues like the front. It's got that doughy eyed, dare I say it, cute look. I don't want to describe my car as cute. I want it to describe it as manly and butch and, uh, and looking like it could race anything on the road. Well, this is anything but that, but there's something about it that it retains that, that butchness. And I guess it is that squatness that it's got about it. And when you look at it, you just think, this is a bit different. This has got something about it that no other car on the road has. And I think the balance of the car and the design front to back, they've got absolutely spot on. So that's the outside. Let's get in and see what it's like in there. And you're greeted in here to, well, what can only be described as a technophobe's nightmare because everything in here appears to be computerized. Wing mirrors, got screens for those. You've got a screen in front of you with your normal layout and display. And then you've got these two extra screens that have everything on them. Now, whether you're switching the screens between each other, the passenger can control one side, you can control the other, or whether you're on your own using it for your navigation and your radio, everything else, everything's on there. But I've got to be honest, a car manufacturer has designed and made it, but it's not a patch on what you, you would expect if you had something like a, an iPad in your hand, which just works seamlessly. It's all there, it all works, it's just a little bit clunky. It's got, uh, I suppose you could say it suits the car. The whole car has got that retro living room feeling, another design part that they were trying to, to get the car to feel like, but it's got a very, I suppose, early noughties look and feel to the graphics and to the usability. It, it's, not, it's not as slick as you would hope. Uh, I'm not gonna take you into all the different bits and pieces because we'd be here for hours showing you all the different bits, everything from the map to a nice little fish aquarium that you can bring up. Uh, needless to say, thank goodness for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto because that just sim simplifies everything. Plug your phone in and you're away. The mapping's better. Everything is a lot better about it. But if you've got the time to play with it and you like this sort of thing, as I do, I have to say, then it's all there and it's, it's just, it's different from every other car that I've ever been in. The rest of the feel of this car, I love this steering wheel. It's just got this, these two spokes across the middle and almost like it's floating top and bottom. And with the leather trim on it, I don't know if it's real leather or not, but it feels like it. It, it, it gives you that sporty, racy feeling and the whole thing, you feel cocooned. Make no mistake, this is a tiny car. It's really, really small. Yes, you could get two adults in the front comfortably. I'll get in the back in a minute and show you that's not two adults in the back. They would squeeze in and they would probably get very fed up with you after about 20 minutes. The rest of the feel of it, it's not real wood, of course, but it, it looks like it on first glance and it's very, very tactile. It all feels very nice. Uh, these doors and the material used and the stitching, it all feels really good quality. Look, it's a Honda. Honda, in my opinion, always make good quality cars. Whether you like the materials used or not, they're always very, very well built. Now, beyond the instant, oh my goodness, I'm surrounded by screens, you've got your usual controls in the usual places, whether it's on the steering wheel or on the stalks. You've got all your heater controls here in the middle. You've got down here by your knee, uh, your, your parking, your forward, your reverse. All those things are there, including what looks like a one pedal driving button. Of course, with the regen in this car, when you lift off, it will bring you to a stop. A couple of cubby holes come cup holders here, which look like, yeah, you can take the, the middle bits out and move them to make the, the holes how you want. And then you've got this nice space here in the, in the middle, uh, which allows another cup holder to come out, but also a little cubby hole here and connectivity. This car is full of connectivity. So I've got a couple of USBs, I've got HDMI, I've got a 230 volt plug and a 12 volt power outlet. I can connect pretty much anything to this car and it will work. It will bring it up on the screen. It will charge everything. This is very much uh, a modern car in retro clothing. And above me, I've got this nice big panel of glass, which I can close off, but it's nice. It lets the light in because, well, it is quite a dark car in here because it's so small and because I've got so much in front of me, actually, I mean, what's that? 20 centimeters I got between the top of my steering wheel and the, the bottom of the, uh, the, the roof lining there. And it's the same across. So the view 
it's almost like a letterbox looking out. It's not to say I don't have a good view out, but it does feel you're very much, you're in this car with it wrapped around you. So as promised, let me show you what it's like in the back. Now then, I'm five foot nine. This is where I was sat driving. Do you know what? I have got room. It's not too bad at all, but I wouldn't want to be much taller than I am. I mean, it has got, the roof lining comes along and then moves up higher here. So when I'm sat back here, actually my head's not hitting the top. Headrests here at the back or head restraints, they move up and down. So I could get myself into a, a comfortable position, but my feet are underneath the, the, the chair in front and the chair's quite low to the floor. So my toes are properly tucked in. If I move them here, well, I've got no support on the back of my legs, which isn't a great thing. It's what I would call a bench seat. There are only two seats back here, two seat belts. This is not a five-seater car, this is a four-seater car. I've moved the passenger seat forward a bit, that would give a bit more room, but I've gotta be honest, if you were much over six foot, I don't think you'd be particularly comfortable back here. It'd be all right for short journeys, of course it would, but I wouldn't wanna go on a long drive. Again, you've got that feeling of being encompassed in the car. There's not much, view out the back once I put my head restraint in the correct position. Uh, the, the roof comes down. I love these lights, by the way. They're like four little LEDs shining down. They look really modern and really nice. Uh, my view out the front's not too bad. Tinted windows at the back. Back here, I've got myself uh, two USB ports, uh, electric windows, a cup holder. I can turn my lights on and off here from the side. And that's pretty much it. It's comfortable. I wouldn't want to spend a long time back here. and I definitely wouldn't want to be back here if I was over six foot. Driving this car on the road, that compactness that we spoke about before and the very small feeling inside, well, it gives you confidence. I don't feel any lower than any other car, but I just feel like I'm in control of everything because everything is so close to me. The screens, having said that, if you want to use the left-hand screen, it is a bit of a reach, but you can flip them around from your side of the car. The wing mirrors or cameras that quite a lot of people have given stick to because they don't particularly like the the cameras or the screens being inside the cabin I really like they haven't bothered me at all they're really really clear really easy and I think they're an improvement on normal wing mirrors now this as I said before is the advanced it's the 16 and that means it's got a slightly bigger motor in it the motor itself is 113 kilowatts, which gives you 151 horsepower and a 0 to 60 in just over eight seconds. Now that doesn't sound particularly groundbreaking or very exciting, but I can tell you because you've got all that low down torque in an electric vehicle, actually when you put your foot down, it's really eager and it feels much quicker than actually it looks on paper. And it's a town car, so everything about the 0 to 30, 0 to 40 miles an hour, that's what you're interested in. You're not that interested in getting up to 60 miles an hour in lightning speed. It's all about off the line maneuverability, of which the turning circle on this is insane. You've probably seen the videos. And the ability just to be able to park it easily wherever you like, feel confident around those tight spots in the town. The ride itself is firm without being hard. And as you'd expect in EVs, when you lift off, you get a certain amount of regen, it slows you down. And that can be con controlled on these flappy panels, giving you more or less regen uh, to the point of almost having none. It just runs on like a normal car. Of course, you've got that one pedal driving, which brings you to a stop. And I've got normal and sport mode. It just gives you a bit more responsiveness on the, the, the throttle or on the pedal when you put your foot down. Range-wise, WLTP will tell you it does best part of 140 miles to a charge. Reality from the 35 and a half kilowatt hour battery, which actually is just over 28 kilowatt hours usable, I'd be surprised if you get much over 100 miles if you're careful. So bear that in mind, this, everything about it just screams city car. Yes, you can go on longer journeys, and I regularly do in my 24 kilowatt hour Leaf, but be prepared to charge and be prepared to wait. And that 50 kilowatt hour charging time, yes, it's quick, but you're gonna be 30 minutes probably getting up to your 80% from a low charge. But within that package, you do get active thermal management. So the battery should be really well looked after. Battery itself, well, that lays across the floor of the car. So with the motor at the back and the weight distribution, they do say that this is a 50-50 weight distributed car. And 
with those decent sized wheels for the size of the car, believe me, this is good fun to throw around. It's really, really confidence inspiring, really easy to drive quickly around corners and really, really direct without losing the feel that you would want from the steering and the feedback that you would get normally. I think the only place that they've really dropped a ball on this car is the size of the boot. And you know, I know it's, it's a, a small car and we keep talking about being a city car, but if I want a city car, I want to be able to do some shopping. I want to be able to put something in the boot. The boot itself is tiny. It's about half the size of a Renault Zoe. So yeah, you can get a few bags in there, but don't expect to do a big family shop. You're gonna end up a lot of the time with things on the back seat. And I think that really does show what this car is designed for. It's not a family car. Yes, you can get people in it. Yes, you can get kids in the back. It's got Isofix. So of course there is a nod towards that, but I've got a growing family and there's no way we would all fit in this car regularly. This is for a couple or a single person that just wants to nip out and about quickly and have some fun and not be afraid of having people looking at them because this is a proper head turner. I've been out in this car for about an hour now and everywhere I go, people are staring at it. It's so unusual and it looks so nice that people just want to look at it. So if you're a bit of an introvert, probably best you steer clear of it because you're going to be getting admiring glances from absolutely everywhere. So after that drive, where does that leave us? Well, on paper, it's a wholly impractical car with technology that we had in our phones best part of a decade ago. Is this worth buying? Well, no, but yes, look at it. Look at its little face, it wants you to buy it. And that is the crux of it. This is not a car you buy with your head, this is a car you buy with your heart. And at anything between 26 and a half thousand pound up to 30,000 pound and beyond, depending on what extras you put on it, this isn't what would represent to me good value for money. But what it is, is unique, it's different, it's unusual. It gives you something that no other car I've driven can even match up to because, well, it's, a little package of all those things that I remember that I wanted in a car when I was in my early teens. And it just brings them all together in effectively a modern box. And that for me is exactly why I would want one of these. I'm not saying I'm gonna go out and buy one because, well, it just, I would never get to use it. It would not work for our family. But if it works for you, and if you love the look of it, go and give one a test drive because I think Unless your wallet is very, very firmly planted in your pocket, you will be parting with some of your hard earned cash. So that's it. Thanks ever so much for watching. Thank you uh, to the guys at Just EVs who have got this car and let me drive it for the day. I really appreciate it. I've watched this right from the start, as I said at the beginning, from when it was a concept car all the way through now to production. And I have absolutely not been let down. Now I've got my hands on it and being able to drive it because this is everything I imagined and hoped it would be. So thanks ever so much. You take care. I'll see you soon. All the best.